message from God's Word, here is Friends Fellowship Assembly Online. Where we reveal Christ, rebuild lives, and revive nations. Welcome. Amen. It's a beautiful thing to be a mother. Amen. And uh, when I talk about mothers, even them that bado ata kuna mtu asha kufinyia jicho, you're still a mother. Because at times we think that kama hauna mtoto, you do not qualify to be called a mother. As long as you're a lady, you're a woman, you're a girl. And this morning as I bring us the word, I'm, I'm really honored to be able to just speak to us. And as, as we speak about mothers, I pray that even the the men will be able to glean from whatever it is that we are learning today. Because whatever that is being taught, the word of God, hainanga speciality, ati ni mother's peke yake, ama ni young people peke yake, it makes a difference to all of us. Amen. We, we thank you, Lord, for the reading and the hearing of your word. Father God, the many times that we have interacted with your word, your word has always been a game changer in our lives. Today we stand because of your word. And even as we have been taught in the morning, Lord, we desire, my Father, to always depend on the proceeding word, O oh God, that you teach us as mothers, as your sons, O oh God. I pray, my Father, that the hearing of your word shall bring healing, shall bring restoration, shall bring encouragement, correction. In Jesus' name we give thanks. Amen. So today I'm going to talk very briefly, I hope, about the decoration of a godly mother. The decoration of a godly mother. We all know that decorations are things done to someone or to, to places or to a position. We have decorated positions and that, that I've had in government. Eh? He's a decorated go government official. He's a decorated senior, senior police officer. Why do they add the decoration part? Because it's not just a common police officer. There are things added to it. In, in the corporate world, there, there are positions that are decorated. Decorated in the sense that, that you can be a manager, but apart from being a manager, there are things that you have been able to labor and have added beauty to that position. So you become a decorated manager. Are we together? So ni kweli ama history na jiongezea. There are doctors that are decorated like I, I, I want to believe that uh, jana nilipita karibu na ofisi ya the late Dr. Magoha. And the person who was carrying me akasema Magoha was was really respected. His his office is just next to St. George's, St. George's Girls High School. So when when he was being um brought to I'm not sure if it is to his office for the people there to be able to pay their last respects Wademo St. George's wali mtengenezea passage it's a very long road so the entire school made a passage for him why because he was not only a doctor <laughs> we saw that he was very effective in whatever he was doing so I pray that we shall be able to look through our lives and and not take for granted anything that God has enabled us to have. If you have a mother that is alive, be grateful for her. Ata kama ni mlevi, ata kama yo kutetesha, ata kama anaka vile upendi. Love that woman. Because them that have their mothers in heaven can tell you, there are so many times they wished their mothers were alive today. Yeah? Buona sana. So we are talking about the decoration of a godly mother. And we are going to look at two scriptures. The first one is in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3 to 4. And uh, this decoration, 1 Peter 3, 3 to 4, speaks of um, some decorations that are used with women. Nanataka men wajue, easy decorations, new one, nanawadada. Sisi si to invent. At a time, your Bible ziliku? Zilikuwa. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3 to 4. Likewise, you wives be in subjection to your own husbands, 
that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Wives hapo kuna evangelism, eh? The evangelism, there's evangelism in different dimensions. Your conversations can be able to win your husband. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Who's adorning, verse 3, who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair. So, kushukanyole janza leo. And of wearing of gold. Or of putting on of apparel. So earrings na kungara nini poa poa ijanza le? Leo. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. In that, in, that, in that which is not corruptible. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Which is in the sight of God of great price. And uh, those are the first illustrations that I will use. That... Uh, when Peter is talking to these women, he talks to them about submission. But apart from submission, he realized that women really struggle with their identity. And he's giving them the solution to their identity. There are some of us that because of our struggles with identity, probably you are never affirmed. Look at the lady seated next to you and tell them the struggle is real. But I want you to know that more real is your identity in God. More real is, is, is your identity in what and who God says you are. So we mwenye unezangalia kwa, kwa kiyo wana wa mbaka watu wanachelewa juu yako. Thank God for that ability. Kuna mwingine awezi. And that is why I have become very intentional with every day of my life. To just look back and tell God thank you. Because there are things that look like they are, they are kawaida things. But to some it is not like that. The fact that I'm able to do that I should be grateful. So Peter here is, is talking to the, to the women and is telling them, if you want to be a godly woman and a godly mother, that um, you should understand, number one, I'm not refusing that you should not be beautiful, you should not adorn yourself, you should not make yourself beautiful, but Anasema, that um, one of the things that you, shall, you must observe is moderation. Because anytime you meet someone that has excesses, just know that that person is struggling with something. Yeah, we know. We know unaonangani kama tumejipaka simiti. We know. Na wengine tunaeka zaidi, tumeka mfuko tatu. Kwa uso tu. Mbako kiniangalia uso na mkono, unaonani kama uso si yangu. Hame mkono ni kama ni ajirani si yangu. We should always do it in moderation because these things are supposed to enhance. We are talking about decorations. Sindio, zinafaku to decorate, siku to change. That neza kutana na standard ni mepaka makeup. Standard ni Peter will say, ay, na huwa nafana Pastor Clarice. Arudi nyuma kukonfirm. Haifai kukua hivo. Kama inabidi arudi nyuma ujue ni kungori. Nimezidisha simiti. So now, don't let your adornment be outward. So nipoa kushuka nyuele, nipoa kukua na wig, na weave, na hizo vitu zote, na gel. <laughs> eh, kuna mtu amezema na wanja. <laughs> Netuwa eyeliner, na eye pencil, na eye shadow, na mascara, hizo vitu zote. They are supposed to, to just emphasize the beauty that God has given us, not replace or not become, I know of ladies who are afraid to look at themselves without makeup, that they actually sleep in makeup. You're, you're destroying your skin. You're not supposed to sleep in makeup. Okay. And there's a video that was doing rounds just before Mother's Day of this man that was getting married to a lady. And then, when they're just about to take vows, makeup mob. Now I'm not sure if they used to how they used to relate because this is a wedding day. Before you get married to someone, of course, Simna Juana. So this lady, this guy takes his phone. Na anajaribu kupiga ude mpicha. Akijaribu kumpiga picha, anaona nika anaona sura ingine enye siya ude. That is so scary that as the groom anatoka mbio from the altar. 
And then some watu wengine wanashanga. So mtu mmoja kwa congregation pia kaenda na simu yake. Na ameka on your marks. So aki, akipiga picha ni kama anaona the same image that uh, the groom saw. So pia ndokambio watu wanatupa viti wa ndokambio. Bride anabaki peke yake. So they were trying to es- to explain the scripture in my thinking. And uh, the first thing that uh, Peter is addressing is uh, arranging the hair. <laughs> hair is arranged, brothers. Hair is arranged. Yani nywele inapangwa. So anytime you see your wife wear a wig, please stop stop taunting her with mean words. Ana arrange hair yake. Kuna mda mzema hapo nyuma don't. So kuna 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 mtu anashanga, why would a woman buy a wig worth 50,000? Why? Hii pesa tungenunua nayo shamba. Na hiyo time I looked at the at the history. It is said that the women then loved blonde wigs. So blonde I janza sai. Ni vizuri kujua neno. Blonde did not begin now. Even then Peter alikuwa na concern. Akaambia ni sawa nunueni tu that is how we are seeing people with green hair and white hair and yellow hair and pink and all these colors. But Peter alikuwa akiwaambia ni poa ku arrange hair but do it in moderation. Let me tell you the truth if you truly fear God if you truly walk with God there are things you'd want to do to your hair. Holy Ghost atakwambia cheza chini. Because if you don't do it hakuna asara yoyote utaenda. But at times we want to keep with the, with the, with the trends and everything that is happening. So let me just give an example. Na huo ni mimi sisemi wa mapasta ma wote wako hivyo. But if today I came in here with the orange and green hair on my head. Siko sure hata kama kuna watu wangekuwa nasikia what I'm teaching. Kuna mtu anajaribu kufikiria kwanza hii nywele pasi yake ali eh yani alikaa tu akashukwa orange na green. Uwe? Hiyo ni 30 minutes tunafikiria bado. So there are times that you have to to lay down some certain things, some certain trends for the greater good of the kingdom. What does it mean? Amen. And then the second thing that Peter addressed that should be decoration, part of the decoration of a, of a godly mother. Because a woman grows into a mother. That the real beauty of a woman comes from the hidden person of the heart. Do you know where you pack moyo wako makeup? So unajua hivyo? You can wear lipstick of any color, wear wig of any amount, but you cannot you cannot make up your heart. And apparently we can't see it, but we can feel it. You can feel it in your attitude. Na unajua attitude ni kama marashi. Mtu anaweza kwa akuongeleshi na madharau lakini attitude yake towards you is enough cologne and that attitude ni kama marashi hata usipongea tunaisikia tu tunakuona tu and the, the, the woman that was uh, 75 years the widow that I was with yesterday when she was teaching she, she said that as women we should learn the hidden person of the heart aise pimpiwa anaweza pimpiwa tu na word na presence ya god so meaning a, 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 a woman that a mother that desires to be decorated proper, properly should learn to stay in the presence of God to stay in the word of God upon the real beauty yako itakuwa itakuwa expressed so this woman said that women that are here ukiona mtoto wa mtu ako na ako na issues eh wewe wako bado wana grow hao watoto wakipita unawaelekeza na mdomo mtoto wa nani ndio huyo It is because your heart has not been decorated by God by his presence by his word. So I have a question to every lady. What do you depend on to make yourself beautiful? Is it the mascara you wear? Is it the dress? There are people who begin to to prepare what they will dress on Sunday on Monday morning. And they just keep on checking to make sure that 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 cloth or that dress iko too sour. But they never take time to 
to read the word. They never take time to spend before God. Haven't you seen ladies that are beautiful, yet have no husband? And no husband is interested. Haven't you seen? What do you think is the problem? Do you think their beauty is the problem? I don't think so. It is the heart. Because that is where the attitude is. And then, I've heard the, the, the Bible says, beauty is in the eyes of? Naeli and Igona Solomon. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. So there are people who look at ladies that have very good husbands. Na wanajiuliza. Na wanajua siwa usha ijiuliza. Lakini wanajiuliza uja mali onaninda ni ude maki. Si tuko hapa hatuna watu. Na umu demvili anaka. Hakuna hazimpoa sana. Siri ni roho. Ambia jirani yako siri ni roho. There are ladies that are very beautiful but wakona roho chafu chafu. Kama dasta. And then the third thing that uh, Peter addressed is the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and a quiet spirit. Meaning that her spirit is spirit yake ni gentle na ni meek, ni humble, ni quiet. Hayezi oza. And apparently, the more they age, the more beautiful it becomes. Because ni watu wa uwepo. And let me tell you, it is, it is interesting that when we, we advance in age, we begin to, the, the more women advance in age, the more complicated they become. Yeah, you didn't hear that. The more complicated they become. The more fragile they become. But, the Bible is commanding us to have the incorruptible beauty that advances with age. Have you ever met ladies that wakikwambia age yao? You can't believe because they still look very young, very beautiful, very energetic. It's because of this, the quiet and gentle spirit, they have learned to stay in the presence of God. So God decorates their lives. Even without makeup, they look better than you do. Woko 30, yana kwambia ko 58, unashindwa uwe. So ni nani mzea hapa? Women are able to spend whatever amount of money so that they look good. They look beautiful. So I pray that we will begin to spend everything to look beautiful also on the inside. Na si inside ya inawea, inside ya roho. Na jumesikia. And then the other thing that is important, the Bible says that a gentle and quiet spirit is very precious in the eyes of the Lord. Peter was talking to these ladies and mothers. Na alikuwa kiwambia, if you want God to value you, Develop this kind of spirit. Develop this kind of quiet and, uh, and gentle spirit. Be humble before God. I don't know if you've ever met ladies from Unajokuna Eastlands, Southlands, Westlands, and Northlands. But one is more famous than the rest. Na inasemekananga wademo metoka Eastland ni maoteru. So you get married. Kuna zile jibu your husband akiambia watu wao waambiana waezi amini sema ule mde mpole that is all the husband does umesema ni okay ni mpole when i was about to get married there's something that my mom said she told me that there is no i know you are a very quiet person but i want you to know there is no married woman that is mpole none hata ule mwenye unaongeagi none why? Because there's something in, in every mother that when you try to, <laughs> to interfere with her territory, even them that are not married, utakipata pata. Anything that belongs to her, waneza cha uachongoe, wakona makuchafupi, waneza cha uachongoe, macho zao ni kengeza. Lakini when you begin to interfere with their, with their territory, you'll begin to see something you have never seen in your entire life. A mother who kept on smiling at you will stop it because you interfered with her territory. So the Bible says that a gentle and quiet spirit is very precious in the eyes of the Lord. Peter described the character of, two, of true beauty to the, to the ladies. So gentleness and quietness of spirit. 
There is a lesson that my husband keeps on telling me that not everyone deserves your anger. Not everyone. Bible in Asema, a gentle and quiet spirit is precious in the sight of God. Some of these lessons we will learn through our children. Buona sifiwe. We will learn through them. And say, mimi, mimi madangu wakua kinipati ya space ya kuexplain. So, pia, you, you don't want your children to explain. Equitness and, and humility is something not very common in our day and time. Because women in this generation are empowered. They are working, they are managers, they are, they are bosses. Most men, most, not all, are afraid to sit or work under female bosses. Because when they are on their menses, it is another issue. And everyone knows. See, that is how you talk. And at times we even talk to our husbands like that. When your husband complains and explains things, every other time, Bible in Asema, the Ananyesha, Bible in Asema, first Peter, that our husbands will be warned by our conversations. So can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine talking to your husband like that? And then utakuja kuripota likuchapa. So I will, I will highlight about five things on the decorations of a godly mother. Where it begins and what happens through a story. A story of a woman that is not so commonly mentioned in the scriptures, but her, eff her eff effect and impact is seen in generations. That her story has been talked about for generations because of something she did. This woman is called Jochebed. So Exodus chapter 2, verse 1, we will read to verse 10. This story of Moses' mother is being, is being um, written to us. The Bible clearly begins by saying, we know that she was not only a woman, but she was a wife. Because the Bible indicates that she got married. But during those times, she was a slave. A slave wa kutengeneza barabara huko Egypt. And Pharaoh alikuwa, and every day, she would hear the the cries of women. Because when walikuwa kizalishwa na the Egyptian women, they, they would hear cries. Why? Because watoto walikuwa kikuwa drowned. Kwa hiyo river up. Male children. And there was a decree from the king that every male child should die. Akizaliwa tu. And uh, I can only imagine how tough it was for this mother. Because Bible in Asema alikuwa na sister. Moses alikuwa na an older sister. Meaning she had given birth before. Moses was not the first child. And um, I'd want to talk about these five things. That number one, the decoration of a godly mother begins in her secret place. And that we have seen when we have read Peter. When Peter was, was talking to the women, Akiwambia, that uh, it is the, the purity of heart, it is the, the genuinity of your heart, the preciousness of a, of a quiet and meek spirit that God and a value. These things, you cannot develop them any other way apart from being a woman of the presence of God. A person that has learned to stay in the secret place. Most mothers that we have known that have made effect, even you being one of them, that today if people ask you how you brought up your children in such harsh environment, we are living in a harsh time. But you've been able to raise up your children. Atawewe, your mother has been able to raise you up. Aneza kwa nim religious but one of the things you can, you can say truly about your mother, she was a praying woman. And today when you look at your family, when you look at your siblings, you can account your success or your knowing God on the account of the prayers of your mom. And therefore, I will encourage you, if you have your mother alive today, I want you to make sure you call her. You might not have so much to give her. If there's something you can share with her, please do. But if you don't, 
just just call her and let her know you appreciate her i remember calling my mom a few days ago she uh, she had actually called me and then while she was talking credit yake kaisha nikamtumia credit and then akasema pana unajua najua uko na mambo mengi wewe ni mchungaji hata usishughulike na mimi ngambia madhe ulishughulika na sisi watu tisa unajaribu kuniambia nishughulike na wewe yeye iwezekani it can't happen why because as mothers at times they do want to do much more than what they have done milele you will remain your, your mother's child it doesn't matter how much you you have it doesn't matter how old you get akiku akikuona hata kuita daktari hata hata kuita mchungaji hata kusema tu mtoto wangu unaendeleaje sema pana madhe umesahau mimi ni daktari please address me as daktari when you have a mother alive or in heaven i know you can identify with some of her influence in our lives our daily living so joshebed was such a mother that conceived a child na bible nasema that when aliza aliona mtu ni msupu you know there are things that have been intentionally written in the scriptures can you imagine the scripture is saying that this child was beautiful na alikuwa kijana sasa imagine kama biblia nasema mama yake aliona ni msupu Farao angesikia mtu msupui yuko unadhani angebaki so the first thing about the decoration of a godly mother is that mother must be a mother of the secret place amen number two, the bible says that uh, this mother loved the child loved mtoi wake kabisa and how do we prove that because she was able to take care of the child three months later na anajua how dangerous it was Can you imagine I'm, I want to believe that because you know you can't hide pregnancy you can't hide pregnancy so I want to believe that at our ama karao wa Egypt walikuwa kimwona wanasema okay tunangoja tu tunangoja uzai so I want to believe that there were many things that zilimuuza that enye ako na ako na mimba but when she gave birth the bible says aliweza kuficha mtoto wake for three months mothers The decoration of a godly mother is proven with her love for her children. That is the second thing. The decoration, the decoration of a godly mother is proven by the love we have for our children. And when we love our children, we will have to teach them a few things. <laughs> If you love your children, you will have to hide them from some certain things. Hide your children from pornography. Hide your children from negative influence. Namtana shindo how do i do that talk to god about your children before you begin to talk to them at your Sunday school talk to god about your children that is loving your children it is proof of love for you to be able to talk to god about your children because god is a giver of children we don't get children from supermarkets we get them from god he is the giver he is the one that ordains it is said that when When a, a man and a woman become intimate the man releases millions of sperms but there is only particular ones that that are able to to join together with a female egg and form a child so meaning it takes god for pregnancy to happen so hii mambo ya kusomea anga wa mama tunakungojea mnacheza kwa hiyo ndoa ai tumengoja watoto watengenezwa ngi na binadamu it is god bwana asifiwe And therefore if you love your children protect them from some certain things. How do we protect them? By using the rod and using the word of God. Teach your children limits. Today you have cooked cabbage. I love cabbage by the way. Sana. So you have cabbage and ugali. And then your child says mimi sikuli. And say mo daddy unataka? Ndakula indomi. Sawa. Kimbilieni ndomi kwa duka. Ataenda boarding atapata hiyo cabbage atakula. So teach your children limits. Bwana asifiwe. What you're able to train them in train them. If you have a child beyond class 2 and you're still washing their inner wares. As a mother, humbly I will tell you you're failing. Mtu wa class 2 yuko 8 years. Ajui hata kosha viombo. Ajui basic disciplines. Pala mekula anachapo sahani. Mamia kuja atoe. 
I remember when you were teaching our son to wash shoes. I hate staying with dirty shoes. As long as watu walitoka nje ya nyumba wakirudi ndani ya nyumba nikirudi sifai kupata viatu kwa mlango. Hizo viatu that is kwangu si kwako. Hizo viatu zinafaa kuoshwa. Na mtu wako designated for your duty anajijua. So I don't have to keep on reminding you. And because my son saw me do it so many times. Atajua naambiwa Juliana wakifanya. The first days she, he used to complain. Mpaka akikuwa na unava kiatu ingine. Anakuambia hizo ni viatu ngapi umevaa leo? Nyinyi wa unfair. Naambia shida iko wapi? So ni vai close shoes nikienda kwa duka juu naogopa kuosha viatu. Utaosha. So nowadays is the one who Mukifika kwa nyumba anasema okay all these shoes are dirty let me go and clean them first. It is the first thing he does every time we arrive home. Huko ni kwangu si kwako. So I'm just teaching my son that it is good for you to be neat. So we love our children by teaching them limits. Teach your children contentment. That kama hakuna ati mtoto ameenda supermarket analia mpaka anajiangusha kwa floor. And I remember a video that I looked at. A child did that to the mother, Mzungu. Akajirusha kwa floor, akaanza kulia. The mom pia akajirusha kwa floor. Akaanza kulia na ye. E, mtoto akasimama akaangalia mama yake. Even ndo vile mtoto aliacha kulia. What the mother was doing was practical content. Tosheka na ile nimekununulia. So wengine mpaka tuko na fuliza because of our children. Don't teach your children excess. Teach them to learn contentment. Because there's a place they will go to visit someone else. Na hizo tabia mbaya watapeleka kwa mtu. Iyo nyumba yyo siku, ni kunoma watu wana kulomena na ugali. Alishanza kusikia rufu. Anza mamina ataka kurudi kwetu leo. Teach your children the reward of hard work. Don't get used to giving your children money for free. That they know where your wallet is, that they can just go and pick money. And go and, these are things that are happening in our generation. That they can come and just get money. And then, saingine sisi wa mama ndo tuna, tuna saidi anga wa, watoto kwa ribika. When the fathers wa kiguruma, nani alichukua pesa zangu? Mama na kuambia, ay, si yuko na 5,000. Alichukua 500 too. <laughs> My friend, that is hard and money. Hakuna mti, hapa Nairobi nisha ona palu watu wenda kuchuna pesa. So the child must understand that there is reward. There is reward for hard work. And when you tell them that, that you, when you perform like this, I'm going to do this, please fulfill as parents. They have performed when they come to you and remind you, unakuwa mkali. Ntoto na chitwa jameni. Siwe mamindo ulisema. Na kukumbusha tu. Nasema kuna pesa ni kugumu. Teach your children to honor your God. And they will, they will learn to honor your God. By seeing you honor God. Chiu na wambia tu. <laughs> Unapatia fea unambia. Nde ni church. Na nita pigia pasta ni jweka milienda church. <laughs> na wana kuwacha umelala. Wanjue mamo kona mchezo. Tutaenda KFC kwa ni utafanya. The Bible says train up a child in a way that he should go. And I want to believe that Moses' mother loved the child so much that wanted to protect him from the, from, the, from the dangers that were happening. The child is so innocent, ajui bado. But, kuna vitu tukitich watoto from their young age. Even, even I encourage parents that even when your children can't speak, when they hear you read the word, when they hear you sing the scriptures and the gospel, let me tell you, I always get concerned every time I hear or I see my children respond to secular music. I always get concerned. Why am I concerned? Because I want to protect them. I even ask them, you ni wimbo gani? So my son, because ni teenage, anakwamjana ya zema, ata si koshua. Kambia sifu unanipima, ni koshua unajwe yo song. Because I'm just trying to tell them that configuration yako siya iyo. But sasa, if your children hear gospel music and they do nothing, and then, wanapatika na place kama wedding, you know kuna places tuzo uza mtu. Eh? 
And then DJ, ni wedding ya watu wameokoka, DJ anaguzisha tu ka kitu. So number three, every godly mother's faith will be tested. And this we see in Exodus chapter 2 verse 2, the third part. The Bible says that um, she hid him three months. Why? Because apart from protecting the child, after she saw the child and saw that the boy is good, I want to believe that apart from just, I, I want to believe that Jochebed was, was a mother that believed and prayed. She was a mother that trusted in God because she was Hebrew. And the dangers kabisa. But she was also able to discern. You see the way we pray for pregnant women even in this church. Eh? And uh, there, there are some children that have even been prophesied over before they, they were given birth to. So she was able to discern that my child has a papa ya mungu. And because I kuna papa ya mungu, eh, naona ni kama e, e three months itabidi ni Niweze kumcover na prayer kabisa. Niweze kumsomea scripture hata kama haezi respond. Because three months mtoto basically haezi ongea. But they're able to respond to a few things. Because they can hear and they can see. So I want to believe that she trusted God completely. During this delicate time of delivery. Mpaka three months. And I can only imagine what went through her mind for the three months. And even before, tufike yo place pala na ikamtoi kwa... Kwa hiyo bulrasha litengeneza na mweke kwa hiyo river palu watu yol kwa kikuwa drowned. Nataka kwa mini that she used to pray, God give me, give me, give me an idea of how I'll, I'll handle this Jew after three months. And can you imagine you're hiding a child for three months na vile huu kwa na kelele? Oh mama likuwa na imani. Na faith yake likuwa tested. Because I'm not sure what she used to do when the child would cry. Because that wambiwi kama likuwa in an isolated place that uh, the Egyptians couldn't hear the, child, the, the child cry, but she trusted God completely. Why? Because she knew her faith was being tested. Mothers, I want you to know that as long as you're a mother, faith yako itakuwa tested. There are times you have taught your children godliness, but they come out, wagondi, wana come out, watoitu wajanja, wajanja. They connect to people that you don't like, and at times you feel like, God, I think, I, I just feel like I just need to leave these children. Juni mejaribu mungu, don't give up. Even in the testing of your faith. Our children will do some very profound mistakes. And God forbid, love that I'm to you on as I get pregnant. Ama apatie mtoto wa mtu mimba. Don't beat them down. It is a trying of your faith. That when we, we, we be... Mothers that will stay in the presence of God. God will give you a way out. God will give you a way out. And I, I, I am a mother to a preteen. But I want to imagine here there are people that have raised teenagers. There are people that were raised teen, even young adults. There are lessons that you've been able to go through with your children. And at times you look and you say, God... I just pray that Utani's idea. Because I don't know what else to do. Let me tell you that uh, those prayers that you pray don't go to waste. As Ikwangi wasted. Those prayers that you have been praying over your children never get tired. So this time that she was praying, I want to believe that God probably gave her this idea. Haka mbiafanya hivi. Haka umtoi kwa nini na umweke pale kwa rive. Dota ya farao na oganga hapo. Akiuliwa sawa. But ata survive. And it was the trying of her faith. There are things that God will instruct you to do towards your children. And every child is unique. Don't compare your children with watoto wa jirani. Ono na watoto wa jirani wapole juinja wa misbehaving. But you don't know the stress that the parents carry. Kuna watoto ni wapole nyumbani shule ni nightmare. Kuna watoto shule ni nightmare nyumbani ni wapole. So never, never think that your children are not good enough. So this, this woman puts her child in the, in the bulrush. Iyo kot ilu kwa ikika kama menja. Ameyeka kwa maji. Alafa na tumasistake. Endo uchungulie nani ya tamchukua. And the sister is very faithful. And then the daughter of Farao 
was even able to to pick that um toto sim toto am Egypt. Can him toto am to Egypt? Kwa niya neko kwa kwa niya na fichua. Na akasema, and I want to believe it is just God making a way, even in the most impossible situation. God put it in Pharaoh's daughter to take that child like her own. Lagi ni akasema sasa mimi. Siwezi mlea juu atamezea kwa, kwa palace. Sikuwa na mimba. So lakini, naeza patia mtu. So sister Moses za natokea na sema, eh, na juu mama naeza kakusaidia. Lakini ideally, she's talking about her mother. The testing of our faith. Trust God. As you trust God, it involves thinking, planning, and applying. <laughs> As you trust God, it involves thinking, planning, and applying. You have any faith. So number four, about godly mothers. Another decoration of a godly mother is that they act bravely. They are brave. They are not timid. There's a story that happened someplace in Kenya. I can't remember the area. But a woman who saved her son from being eaten with a crocodile. Unajua crocodile? Unajua vile mdomo ya crocodile inaka? Wewe unetu mtoto wako anakulwa na crocodile. Unasema kama mbaya mbaya, ukuli mtoto wangu. They act bravely. Some of us need to be brave enough to talk to our children about very hard conversations. It takes bravery. When your child asks, probably when your child begins to to go through um, ovulation and they begin to to have their menses. So be brave enough. Look at the woman seated next to you. Mwambie, be brave. This woman was brave. And I will tell you why she was brave. I say she was brave because what kind of woman knows that watoto wanatafta kuuliwa na anajua hii river ndio watoto wamekuanga wakikuwa drowned. Na akaacha mtoi wake tu akasema yenyewe God, ju nimekutrust. I want to just let go. At times some of the brave things we need to do is stop policing our children. It takes bravery. Yaani ni seme tu yenye Mungu na amini tu sifa ta make the right decisions. See after every five minutes, ile siku anatoka shule. Umefika umepanda umoina ama ume uko shua uko kwa gari sawa. It takes bravery to trust God. Amen. It takes bravery to just let go your children and trust that they are going to make the right decisions. Wait until your son anze kwa na girlfriend. Na kwambia una amani. Wakienda out tu na ongea in tanks the whole day. Nasema Mungu aki naomba wasifanye ile kitu aki Mungu. Look at a parent sitting next to you mwambie be brave. Because there are things, there are things that our children will experiment. But it takes bravery as parents for us to be able to talk to them. Talk to them about the challenges of sexual Immorality. Talk, talk to them about lesbianism, homosexuality. Si tu ligro tu kiambwa sex and tabiambaya. I hope that is not what you tell your children. Na waona sana. Talk to them, explain to them what happens. Because if you don't, the world will explain to them. And the world does it in a very cruel way. So it is safer for them to, to hear it from you. So for you to be brave to let your children go, you, you're actually displaying your unwavering faith in God. That God, I am sure that you'll be able to watch over my child. Whoever they connect to, whoever they meet, I pray God, and you'll be amazed with what God is able to do. Because we can only check out our children or police them to a certain extent. Kuna zile uwezi jua. But if you are able to be brave to trust God in letting go of our children, mina kumbuka, my mom had eight daughters and one son. So every time she would gather us as daughters, kuna statement madhangu wa kianza kuongeo na jotu leo ni kisomo. And say, maisha msena ni hivi. So we used to wonder. Sasa, hivi. Lakini as you grow up, you begin to understand that it is very delicate. It is very delicate. Wait until your daughters grow. And then they begin to tell you, Daddy, you know, there's a, there's a boy. Hey, hey, 
Eh ati nini? Nani? Walete vetting hapa kwanza. Na unaangalia yule mtu anasema aletwe vetting anasema ujamaa atavunjwa. Asiyezi mleta hapa. Let us be brave enough to just trust God with our children. Amen. And her brave, her brave act made her to have the child returned to her. It was a blessing. That I believe God, na God in his own way, aka let him to back to her. Probably she didn't even believe that can happen, but it happened. In a, in a foreign land, sasa saa hii angekuwa na teke umtoto hata na kana yeye hapo nje akiulizo mtoto ni wanani anasema ni wa farao's daughter na ni mtoto wake lakini wa farao <laughs> so the last thing i'll talk about the 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 the, the reward of a, of a, the decoration of a godly mother is every godly every every godly every decorated godly mother will be rewarded by god you'll be rewarded by god and for her her reward was apart from being the child being returned for her to take care of the child mbaka grow to a certain age ndo arudisho kwa farao's daughter ni farao's daughter alimwambia i'll even pay you nitakulipa mshahara yani imagine mom you returned your child is returned to you but apart from that you're being paid to take care of your own child Bwana asifiwe. Isn't it a blessing? The Bible says that the Lord is the rewarder. God is your rewarder. Mothers hear me. Be faithful in raising those children. And when I say those children, they are children that will come in your hands. They are not children that you have sired bio- biologically. But as you take care of these children, labda wewe ni mwalimu, take care of those children. God will be your reward. My mother was a teacher and she was a mother to those children. Today we see kwa, kwa wedding ya flow we met a girl that saw Julie at the door akakuja kwake akamwambia, "Eh, unafanana na mtu najua?" <laughs> Akamza, "Do you know a lady by the name of she said my mother's name." Then Julie smiles and says, "I'm actually her daughter." And uh, by extension, um umschana ni relative ya kina Jo. Ameolewa I think with the cousin or the uncle. So akaanza kusema vile my mama alimsaidia kujua maths. So whatever we are we were, the attention we were getting was a reward of a mother that labored in someone's life mwenye hata tujui. So continue labor, laboring in the lives of every child that God brings in your way. Why? Because God has a reward for you. Unaweza unaweza angalia watoi wako na ushindwe how am I going to kutoboa na hawa toi There is a there is a book of remembrance that God will open and he will remember the labor you labored in someone else's child and God will preserve your own children Bwana asifiwe So surrender your children entirely to God Trust God with every issue that involves your children and believe God will perfect everything that concerns your children Amen. I will repeat again. Surrender your children entirely to God. Second, trust God with every issue involving your children. And then third, believe God will perfect everything that concerns your children. Amen. Surrender your children entirely to God. Trust God with every issue involving your children. And lastly, Believe God will perfect everything that concerns your children. Amen. And with our heads bowed, I just want you to pray for your children. Any child that God has has blessed you with. Anaweza kuwa biological, anaweza kuwa mtoto wa jirani, mtoto wa bishte yako. I want you to just pray for that child. I don't know what you're going to pray about, but just take some time and pray for these children. In the name of Jesus Lord today even as we celebrate motherhood oh God we thank you for the privilege of being mothers oh God in our generation we thank you for the privilege oh God of uh, raising children and we thank you for the privilege oh God of teaching us by your word that we can trust you 
with our children, O God, that we can surrender them, we can let them go, knowing that you watch over them, my Father. We give you thanks and praise, Lord. Amen.